I spoke about my time in the Midwest and going to the Greyhound bus station mm -hmm. and hearing for the first time the phrase poor white trash. Mm -hmm. These people who, you know, I was there just before the Civil Rights uh, Charter came in. And frankly, the idea that a person would not have one job but have two jobs or three jobs and work all the light hours that are there and still not be entitled to the basic protection of fundamental care is so outrageous. So whether you agree with Obama and what he is doing in aspects of his foreign policy, and I might disagree with some things about Latin South America, about but one Asia? of the things I do agree, the idea of there being a social floor below which people wouldn't fall, that's the future. I think even the poorest people in the great country that is the United States should be entitled to basic health care okay. and I don't think they'll thank the Sarah Palin lookalikes and followers for taking it off them. You you're about as late arrival in Irish politics as Sarah Palin is in American politics. <laughs> and both of you have the same tactic. The tactic is to get a large crowd, whip them up, try and discover what is the greatest fear, work on that, and feed it right back, and, and you get a frenzy. And that leads you in time then to when you have, in fact, maybe one of the most gifted presidents elected. I happen not to agree with all his foreign policy, but you know, you regard, for example, as someone who happens to have been a professor at Harvard mm -hmm. as somehow or another kept. You don't find anything wrong at all with this Tea Party ignorance that is being brought all around the United States, <laughs> well, which is regularly insulting people who have been democratically elected. Uh, Deputy Higgins, I'm not going to insult you. Oh, I by, think you should. By bringing up I think your you, lack of knowledge of the Tea Party movement. Other than I the lived in the United that, States, and do you know one of the interesting the, things, the, Mike? Do you know the big difference as I listened? Mm -hmm. I lived in the Midwest, in mm -hmm. Willie Nelson country. I was a student there at the end of the 60s. Mm -hmm. I was a professor in Illinois way when they, the end of the 70s. Mm. The magnificent, decent, generous people of the United States with whom I had supper, people I sat around there, and, mm. there ate homemade ice cream with them. The difference between them and the tiny elite who are in charge of warmongering foreign policy of the United States <laughs> is just enormous. The so therefore, when you go on your picnic around mm. the country, you're really not representing the decent United States people mm. who are very proud, correctly, of the person they've elected president, which they're entitled to By do. Way. But you have the neck to say that people like me, who are willing to talk to people who are at each side trying to build peace, are somehow or another in favour of people who want to murder Jewish people. Right. That is an outrageous statement. I am not anti-Semitic. I am not in favour of murder. And unlike you, I make my profession in politics and I worked in human rights and I condemned Hamas for setting rockets. None of that will matter to you. Because you know what you want? I mean, I wish you well. Keep drinking Guinness and keep ranting away. But don't suggest that those of us who are working for peace in the heat of the day are somehow interested in murdering Jews. Okay. There's a man in the United, you know him. I think you may have interviewed him. Mark B. Klein. He represents 14 Jewish organizations in New York. He organized 45 members of the House of Representatives to sign a letter condemning Barack Obama for giving Mary Robinson the Medal of Honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was debating with him on a program rather like this. And I said to him, how, why, how can you conclude that Mary Robinson is anti-Semitic? And he said, I said, Bishop Tutu, for example. Bishop Tutu is anti-Semitic as well. You're going down that road. And really it is very dangerous stuff. The fact of the matter is, look, Young people from the United States are traveling all over the world again. They're welcome in Europe. They're backpackers in hostels. People are talking to them because the image of the United States we've got away from this warmongering is getting better. At least 47 million people that the likes of you condemn to no health care in a country that I was proud to work in. These people are going to have some health care. Okay. So this is the issue. Our so therefore be proud to be a decent American so, rather than be just a so, wanker whipping up fear. Yeah. Uh, uh.